What we've got here is about a 12 inch northern red oak and you can see it's uh, been subject to some attack at the bottom. I do intend to take it for firewood but it's not going to be a simple operation. Looking a little closer we can see that uh, this has suffered uh, part of a blowdown. It's uh, cracked and so that whole thing is leaning up in the trees and that makes it a widow maker. But what really makes it a widow maker is that if we look up here there's another tree that's leaning into it and there's actually two trees. And if you look closely you can see that one of them is ready to just come sliding right down and land on whoever's working on that oak tree. So underneath here coming down we've got a poplar tree so that's got to come down because that would fall on us while we're working on the oak tree but uh, probably the really bad actor is this other tree and it is also broken and it's got a really bad break there but it probably won't come down just by pulling and it's up high enough so that I can't reach it by trying to go for the broken part. I'll have to take it at the stump. So that means I'm going to have that thing hanging over me. So what I'm going to have to do is put a rope around it. So those problems out there and having to work over here, I'm going to work to the right of it because there's that smaller tree that I can jump behind when uh, this I think it's a poplar but it's been fighting disease so long you just can't tell what it is. I'm gonna have it tied off over this way to that tree and uh, I'm gonna go with that angle because that will mean that when it starts to fall it's uh, more or less gonna have to come straight down rather than having a chance to come towards me. Looking at a plan view, I will be standing at X. I will have a line over to the left, uh, shown here in orange, and that will be very heavily tensioned. I will use a pulley on it to make sure that I can get something on the order of three or four hundred pounds of pull to the side to keep it away from where I'll be standing. Also, I'll cut the notch on a slight angle uh, also so that if it kicks back it will uh, tend to go over to the left and away from where I'm standing. A lot of poison ivy here. Okay, at this point we'll go ahead and start tensioning this up. Tie it off. So now that we've got this, turns out it is poplar, down on the ground or at least off with our heads, it's going to be a lot easier to work with and section it and eventually free our oak so we can harvest it. Even though we've gotten this down onto the ground, all of that is still up in the air and it's still a very dangerous situation. Any of those branches, either on the supporting tree or this tree, could break at any moment. And so when we go to fell it, we don't know what's going to happen with the support and which direction it might go. We really want it to go just straight down, so we'll notch it and then undercut it and that will hopefully leave a hinge that will let it just settle uh, pretty far down to the ground. Since I'll be over here cutting, once again, just because something might happen up there that'd be funny, I've got it tied off to the tree to make sure it doesn't come towards me.
now that we've got the trunk separated from that 90 degree bend, there's a chance we may be able to turn it and get it to fall out of the tree without having to do additional cuts. Not likely, but it's worth a try. So, take our PV. Nope, that's still in there solid. So, we've got the first poplar down. And over there on the left, that's the red oak tree that we want to harvest. But the top of it is still tied up with the top of the first poplar. And then we've got this second poplar closest to camera. And hopefully when we cut that, the uh, combined weight will allow both the poplars to fall. At this point, the bottoms of the two poplars are on the ground, but both of them have remained fastened up in the uh, tangle of branches up there. So now that they're nearly vertical, we can do something that we couldn't do earlier, and that is we'll get them to come this way so that they will be pulling out of the branches. To do that, we'll put a little notch on the far side and then cut in from this side and use a rope to pull it out so that it folds down over in this area. That way, it'll load and probably come out of there. We'll be very careful not to cut all the way through the hinge so that we'll actually be out on the rope pulling well away from anything falling. At least I preserved my dignity. It's hard to tell for sure which way this oak wants to go. It's kind of heavy on that side, so you might think that the notch needs to be cut over here. But actually, I'm assuming it's going to be trying to kick back this way, in which case we want the notch on the side away from the lean so that it can kick back this way. So I'll cut a notch that way and then we'll see how it looks like it's going. I may end up having to cut a notch on both sides, but initially we'll cut one here. I'll cut it kind of high because uh, this down here won't make good firewood, but it will make good chipmunk habitat, so I'll leave it there for them. Apparently it wants to set straight down. So here's our status. We've got the first two logs off of our red oak, but the majority of the red oak is just about ready to fall into that crotch of the red maple. And if it does, it'll probably get hung up. So what we're gonna wanna do is make sure that when the bottom gets cut, it uh, kicks towards the tree uh, towards the red maple tree so that uh, eventually we can tilt it uh, towards the camera here. The first uh, poplar tree is just about vertical now. So what we'll try to do is put a rope up in that 
and see if we can pull it over so that we don't have to worry about it falling on our heads. Okay, so I got that one out of the way. One of the plants that I consider a little bit of an annoyance here in the northeast is wild grape. Uh, these vines will grow right up into the very tops of trees. I've seen them grow as much as six inches in diameter. And up there, they're a very strong binding force. Fortunately, they don't strangle the trees like uh, uh, bittersweet does. But if you're trying to fell trees in the woods, these can really lock the tops up so they don't want to come down. You see, the uh, oak I'm wanting to get is in the crotch. It's not jammed in yet, but there's a potential for it to fall in there. Where the wild grape can actually help us is that up there, the vine is actually going way up in the tree, up in the red maple, and it's actually supporting the uh, far side of the oak tree. So it's actually cradling it, and if I can pull on the front, that may swing it back out through that crotch. So we'll see if we can make that uh, wild grape work for us for a change. It looks like the oak is ready to fall out, but it's still well into the crotch, so I don't have to worry about it going that direction. But I have cleared an escape path back out of there so that I'll have some place to run to in case the hinge actually does start to go. So what I'll do is I'll be notching, and as soon as I see it start to actually move, I'll get out of there and then I'll use the ropes to try and pull it to fail the hinge. Come on. The uh, wild grape is growing there just to the right of those trees. And you can see it goes up and it goes behind that tree. And it's still a strong vine and it hooks around the tree. So um, looking at the right side. Um, stem of the red maple, you can see that big thick vine there. And between that and the vine extension that's going out to the right, our oak in between is well held. So what I'm going to do is take my machete and hack through the vine at the bottom. And once that's hacked through, then we may be able to pull some of the vine through the crotch and uh, change the way the vine is supporting the oak and maybe get it pulled loose so that the oak will come down. So that worked and that pretty much takes care of our tree. <laughs>